All right, ladies and gents, we are here at the Tun Raza Exchange, Exchange 106, the pinnacle of the TRX development. And we're here with BMW, who have launched a couple of very exciting new cars. Mini have also expanded their lineup with two exciting new cars. And there are also four bikes here to take our imagination away. So let's get started. <laughs> Let's begin here with the new BMW 430i Coupe M Sport. Now, BMW themselves admit that this is a very divisive car. And as we move down to the front, you can tell exactly why. The enormous beaver grille, as it's been come to, uh, to, be, to be referred to as, is certainly still a very divisive sight, even as I stand in front of it. But the fact of the matter is, the 4 Series represents a very important segment for BMW. BMW as a brand began with the Coupe, and so this is a manifestation, an example of just how far BMW has come without ever forgetting its roots. So let's get down to business. So for starters, talking about the grille, the biggest grille, the most divisive grille in BMW Coupe history. This thing comes with floating horizontal nuggets in aluminium mat in a honeycomb pattern in chrome high gloss. As you can see, this chrome truly is high gloss. In some markets, it is available in black, but in our market, it's coming in with chrome. Now, underneath the bonnet, there is a four-cylinder petrol engine with an eight-speed automatic transmission, which is able to hit zero to 105.8 seconds. It's a two-liter, producing 258 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Top speed is rated at 250 kilometers per hour, but fuel consumption is rated at a miserly 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, the thing is, with a coupe, it is a lot more than just stats. With a coupe, it's about feel, it's about sensation, it's about experience. And we have no doubt that regardless of how it looks, the 4 Series will most certainly deliver in terms of dynamics, in terms of engagement. This is a BMW after all. And regardless of how it looks, it will continue to feel and drive like a BMW. So now let's move to the BMW X7, the big daddy, the Mac daddy BMW in the room. Now. The X7 could be considered the antithesis to the 4 Series, but in reality, these cars coexist. They have a symbiotic relationship between the two of them. The X7, for example, has won a lot of praise for the fact that despite its gargantuan size, it still feels and drives like a BMW, and that is down to the influence that has been brought upon by the 4 Series and the cars that came before it. So let's quickly move on to the important stats. So, under the bonnet is a 3-litre inline 6 engine with an 8-speed Statronic transmission which produces 340 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. Power goes to all four wheels via the 8-speed automatic transmission. 0 to 100 is achieved in 6.1 seconds, top speed at 245 kilometers per hour. Fuel consumption is rated at 9.5 litres per hundred kilometers. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the absolute statement for BMW. Now, SUVs have become more and more popular over the years, and as a result, BMW themselves have seen the need to introduce a car like this. Previously, it used to be enough to say that you have a 7 Series, but today, everyone wants SUVs, and so the X7 is here to answer that call. Now, it's worth noting, that this X7 is not the first time that we've seen this car in this market, but the reality is this X7 exists. This X7 exists because this is now the CKD model. That's right, this is now built in Kulim Kedah, and as a result, it has a unique price advantage. At 708,000 ringgit, this is now the cheapest way. <coughs> Actually, no, I shouldn't use the word cheap. This is the most affordable way to get into an enormous massive three-row seven six or seven-seater SUV with a proper luxury bag. Let's very quickly take a look inside just to see what 708,000 ringgit buys you. So the 7 Series shares its interior with the BMW 7 Series and as a result in here it's all quite familiar. All the switch gear, all the buttons, the overall design is very similar to what we've come to expect from a modern BMW. So there are no surprises here but every item here of course is crafted to the highest possible quality and as a result it exudes BMW-ness and every possible juncture. Now like I said earlier this car is powered by a 3-litre inline 6 engine. There is no plug-in hybrid for it at the moment. BMW Group Malaysia has not suggested there will be a plug-in hybrid for it at the moment but we've no doubt out, that if a plug-in hybrid model were to be introduced, the X7 would be so competitively priced, it would be difficult to justify even an X5 beneath it. But as it stands now, 
the market, the segment, uh, and the models themselves are very clearly defined. And so we've no doubt that this will not cannibalize sales of the BMW X5. So now let's move on to the next set of cars, which are all the way over there from a different brand. So we've spent the last few minutes talking about BMW. So now let's talk about Mini. Now, the thing about Mini is most of the time it means fun. Mini means fun. Mini means engagement. And nothing, perhaps nothing at all, means more engagement than these two cars here. So here we have the new Mini Cooper S Countryman and its sister, the Mini Cooper SE Countryman. So the difference between these two cars is simply the powertrain. This is powered by a two-liter four-cylinder mini twin power turbo engine producing producing 192 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Whereas this guy has a 1.5 liter three cylinder mini twin power turbo engine with an electric motor, which produces a combined 224 horsepower and 385 newton meters of torque. Now, in terms of spec, these cars are identical. Again, it's only the engine that differentiates them. So this is now both locally assembled uh, and they feature the mini all four exterior optic auto led headlights the bonnet stripes there which look really cool roof rails and side sills and it is equipped with the union jack rear tail light with a more block design triangular surface whatever the <coughs> that means but these tail lights as far as i'm concerned you either like it or hate it i am truly indifferent uh i think that the original headlights were kind of cool it was more in keeping with what mini means but uh BMW Group seems to really want to emphasize the fact that these cars are English, so whatever. Now, the interior comes with piano black, sorry, the exterior comes with piano black exterior optic, the mini yours illuminated cockpit in shaded silver with dark silver door bezels and hazy grey. So let's look at the interior. There are some changes here that are worth noting. So for starters, now the instrumentation is fully digital. So there is a five inch uh, digital display here in front of the driver, and you also get an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen in the middle with mini navigation. It's worth noting that the infotainment system in this car now comes with a 4G SIM card built in. So that enables intelligent emergency call, mini tele-services and remote services as well. And uh, these cars are now available in the typical range of colors, which is chili red, white silver, island blue, thunder gray, British racing green, and for the first time ever, sage green, which is the color of this car over here. Now to talk about the PHEV just a little bit more, this car, like I said earlier, comes with a bespoke powertrain, so it's a 1.5 litre three cylinder. That car has a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. This has a six speed uh, dual clutch automatic transmission. And here is the charge port itself. Now, this car can do all electric for about 48 kilometers on a full charge. This is the mini wall box, or in this case, the uh, mini electric wall box by BMW uh, and this does not come with the car instead the cars all come with a type 2 to type 2 charger which means you can use public chargers and all minis will come with the charge now uh, electric charging card for one year complimentary after that customers will be uh, it'll be upon themselves to renew their charge now subscriptions but with over 300 charge points available across the country there's no doubt it will be very easy to keep your mini cooper se countryman topped up throughout your journey now, it's worth noting again that these cars are both locally assembled, which means that they are now priced at 244,265 ringgit for the Cooper S Countryman, as seen here, whereas the Sage Green car on this side is available for 254,461 ringgit and 84 sen. So, what do you think about the four new cars from BMW Group, the two new Minis and the two new BMWs? Let us know in the comment section below. My name is Ayman Abdullah. This has been a Malaysian Motoring video. Hope you guys are keeping safe and keeping well and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe, mask up, maintain distance and jangan bodoh.